Hello, good afternoon, New Minds Nation, New Me, hashtag New Me Nation. You can see it's another one of those very lucky days when you don't have to listen to just me because as I promised, we're going to be bringing on some very special guests like we have a couple of times already. So today was episode 23. Um, we had another fantastic lineup of programming and I, I know you got some cool previews from Mr. Justin this morning about some big events coming up and the global cardboard challenge that New Minds is kind of spearheading as a 24 hour challenge of creativity and innovation. And we're here to talk about another way of creating and innovating while stuck in quarantine. And that is how can we stay fit, stay flexible, stay sane, stay balanced while well, kind of in this, uh, topsy-turvy world of quarantine and all this. So I have a very special guest with me today. This is Tiffany Henderson. I've known her for many years, actually. We worked together in the corporate world and the software world. We were both kind of like a, a cubicle farmers, I guess, maybe is one way to put it, doing <laughs> software testing yeah. and development and design. And we both, um, shortly after the dot-com bubble burst, you know, early 2000s, we both kind of had like a a major pivot. And I think it was a pivot towards something that was a question of alignment for both of us. We both kind of went our ways. I went into the education world and you went deeper and deeper. Although you were already teaching yoga, you went deeper and deeper into the wellness space. And since then have continued to master the art of teaching yoga, teaching meditation. You're now a certified health coach. And so I would call you a master teacher heart-centered teacher that I think the style of uh -huh. yoga and teaching that you bring to the table is unique and that it's so sensitive and heart-centered and so as as we started to think about what kind of value can we bring to our listeners on New Minds TV and you know how can we add some special layer of you know um skillfulness to to dealing with life under in this new reality, I thought one of the major categories has to be wellness. It has to be in wellness, holistic, right? It has to include mind, body, and spirit. And with your very special approach, very adaptive and creative approach to yoga in particular, I thought, let's bring Tiffany on and let's chat a little bit about how could we possibly stay fit and flexible in this, you know, these cramped quarters, you know, mom and dad are both trying to work. The, we got several kids trying to do online school. There's not much space to go around. First basic question, can we still do yoga at home, Tiffany? Oh, absolutely we can <laughs> because all those yoga teachers are also at home and you may have seen a plethora of yoga instructors doing virtual classes and I am one of them. Yeah. Um, fitness teachers of all genres are out there. So if I can create a space to where I can teach and you can see me, um, you can create a space to practice a little fitness or a little yoga. I heard one person does it in their walk-in closet because that was the only place the rest of the family did not go to. Oh my goodness, so it, yeah. it is possible to do it in a space of wherever your mat is. Um, today, we, we talked about what would be helpful to our parents and children who are doing a lot of studying, maybe working on homework or projects, or maybe they're working in the garden. What are some easy things we can do? And uh, we talked about doing some very uh, sneaky, easy ninja yeah. yoga. Exactly. Uh, just using a chair. Yeah. And so, yeah. That was my thinking because I think, Tiffany, I think a lot of us, a lot of us out here are trapped in this sort of binary, like all or nothing. Like, man, I, I can't do a full hour yoga class. So I guess I just have to throw yoga out the window or I can't, I can't mm -hmm. get my five mile run in. So I guess just, I can't run during this time, but I like your approach because you're saying, you know, just adapt. It doesn't have to be all or nothing. It can be a little bit sneaky and the way you're describing it. It's almost like I could be at the table with my kid, you know, helping him or her with homework. And at the same time, getting a little twist in. Or something like that. Right, right. Yeah. Doing a little shoulder roll here. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and, and you can even have your kids do this. No doubt they're feeling it in their neck and shoulders as well. Yeah. Um, but those of us who are a bit older than kids will find it in our hips and low back. And um, yeah. so I'll definitely show you guys some yeah, of that. So I, I can't wait in a minute to get to some specific 
poses that you can show us on the chair. But before that, I want to even bring a more general question up. And that is, you know, as you know, you're, you've been doing yoga and teaching yoga for years and years, and you've seen firsthand the benefits of having a yoga practice or, and a meditation practice as well. What, how important is it to have some kind of outlet like yoga or meditation now that really, you know, emphasizes the relaxation response over the fight or flight, the, the sympathetic nervous system that is activated in a lot of people right now. From your perspective as a health coach and a, and a yogi, what, how important is it right now to find space in your day for something like this? Um, it's, it really is very important, and you hit, it on, hit on it perfectly. In general, yoga helps with the parasympathetic nervous system, so it helps dial back the sympathetic nervous system. It helps dial back the fight, flight, or freeze and trigger that relax relaxation response. Um, we call it rest and digest response, where our bodies can digest. We can do cell repair. We can, you know, just do all sorts of things our body needs that turns it down when we're in flight, flight, flight fight, flight, or freeze. Um, and so even for me as a yoga teacher, I'm breathing, I'm, I'm trying to lay out my day and, and be loose with it at the same time without adding pressure. But I could feel it in my stomach. I was still holding the stress response in my stomach. Yeah. And um, I think that just comes with seeing, realizing we are okay. It may not be the way we're used to seeing it, but um, we talked a little bit about this uh, the other day is those three basic needs. Yeah. I love am I that. safe? Okay. Am I safe? Am I satisfaction? Am I feeling connected? And when one of those three or all three of them are out of whack, we're going to feel fearful and frustrated and hurt. And so if we can just check in with ourselves and bring those things into balance and tying that back to yoga Yoga helps us get a little bit more quiet. It helps us tune into our body to see where we're holding tension. And if I'm feeling, um, if I'm feeling tight or, or kind of clunky in a movement, that's probably being mirrored outside of me as well as I interact with others. Right. It's like a micro. And so as I can tune in, as I can tune in, I can start identifying Maybe what are my needs that are not being met? And how can I do that in a way that is helpful and healthful? You know, you don't run over everybody else to get it done, but how can I take care of me so I can take care of everyone else? Yeah, I love that. I'm glad that you brought up those three those three filters because I, I wrote them down in our conversation yesterday. I want to review for the benefit of our listeners here. So these three kind of checks, right? Like, am I feeling safe? Am I feeling satisfied? Am I feeling connected? And like you said, I just want to review. If one of the one or more of those is out of balance, or the answer is not a yes, then you're you're off kilter, you're off balance, and you need a way mm -hmm. to kind of bring bring yourself back to balance. So I love that as a tool because I think a lot of us these days may have those days where we are really you know out of tune and we don't know quite why. I mean, we know the general big why, like we're in a pandemic, right? So everyone's off kilter. Right. Okay. But on, at the micro level, in a given day, some days are better than others. And some you might find yourself, you know, kind of noticing when you tune in, like, wow, I'm really off today. And this helps. I love this because it really helps you search spotlight it a little bit more deeply and ask, OK, well, which one of these three is it? Because that could determine how I, how I address it. If it's a matter mm -hmm. of, you know, feeling disconnected then there are ways that I can find to connect. If it's a, a matter of not feeling some level of satisfaction, then what kind of nourishment am I missing? You know, because I think a lot of us, yeah. I, don't, I don't want to go down a rabbit hole here, but a lot of us may be stressed. It is easy. <laughs> Stress eating mm -hmm. or finding that satisfaction in unhealthy yeah. ways, right? But I think, right, I don't right. want to overstate it, but in a way, yoga, yoga could be almost a panacea or a catch-all to kind of at least, if nothing else, bring you back to that center, to that moment where you can see clearly which of these three it could be. Do you mm -hmm. agree with that? Oh, I totally agree with that yeah. because when, just by starting to breathe and then noticing where we may be tied at and addressing that need 
like, oh, my low back is tight. Well, maybe a side stretch would help that. Now we're tuning into our needs. Mm. Oh, and yeah, when we start yeah. listening to ourselves, yeah. we're going to meet that need of safety. I'm okay. Yeah. Really, I'm okay. Um, and satisfaction, that's kind of a broad term, but we could also tie that to feelings of contentment. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that's by simply accomplishing something, yeah. um, checking something off our list, mm -hmm. uh, maybe acknowledging I did five minutes of yoga, you know, yeah. Yeah. or um, I helped my child overcome this barrier. Um, and so we, we sometimes have to pause and, and reflect on what we can be content, be contented by or satisfied by. Um, and then that connection, sometimes we just need to connect with ourselves. Sometimes we just need to make a few phone calls. I'm using the phone more than ever oh, and not yeah. to text, but yeah. to actually have conversation. Yeah. And that makes me feel content. It makes me, I mean, it makes me feel connected. It makes me feel loved. But um, sometimes we just need to go inside and see what we can do to provide ourselves. Cause we're not always in an, in an environment where we can um, work with those around us to meet these needs. Uh, yeah. Sometimes we just need to go inside. And then that becomes that inner resilience we've been talking about. And and we talked about this, uh, the book, Resilient, actually. Yeah, by that's, where those, that's where those three factors came from. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. And and if we can strengthen this inner resilience, in, uh, inner resiliency, then we can handle challenges better. And when we handle challenges better, we move out of the flight, flight, free spot and move into response mode. Yeah. Parasympathetic, rest yeah. and digest. Even right. as challenges start coming at us, we're able to switch back into that um, de-stress mode, if you will. And just, yoga is a great tool for this. Yeah. And just jumping back to echo something you already said is when we do that for ourselves it's kind of like the oxygen mask effect like you know the old like yes you know, get save yourself first or you're not going to be able to save anyone else on the when the airplane's going down right um but yeah right. as a parent i mean a lot of our listeners are parents and so they may have this mm, underpinning of guilt if they if they start to do this self-care because they think wow mm -hmm. this, you know there's high stress the family is around I need to prioritize the kids. I need to take care of the house. I need to, you know, make sure things are in order. But like you were saying, if that's not coming from the healthy response space, then it's not of benefit, right? So, and there's, mm -hmm. you'll, you'll I also just think of it as a ripple effect. It's almost like, you know, mm -hmm. not to get too metaphysical, but a ripple of, of consciousness in the household. When you can come into that space, that centered space, yes. you're rippling it out to all your uh, loved ones in, in that house space, right? So I would love to right. get actually to, well, sorry, go ahead. I don't want to cut you off. Finish that point. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I was going to say, um, imagine if you're moving from a more contented place or you're, you've had your, you met, managed to figure out how to meet your needs, um, even with a few deep breaths, imagine how then you interact with your children. And if you can help them calmly work through something difficult like you said that's that ripple effect that moves throughout the house um yeah. but if we are on go reacting we're just depleting that and then we can't even respond uh with grit which is one of those topics you like you guys talk a lot about yeah if we're depleting that grit we just we're losing ground fast so it it, it doesn't have to be the 30 minute workout or an hour long bath um, it can be five seconds of breathing to just come back to yourself. What is it I need? Maybe mentally do it and then respond to the situation around you. And yeah. then try to take time later. Yeah, I love that. Um, and now I'm I'm getting so excited and anxious to see some of these actual sneaky ninja yoga poses <laughs> on a chair. So why don't we, <laughs> if you don't mind, let's let's get into that. Um, sure. I'm going to put you on full full view here in the meeting so that people can get a bigger view of you. And I think you're going to go move back to the chair and show us a few poses, right? Okay. And sure I, also, am. I also got All a right. comment. I also got a comment on our on our feed that they're having trouble hearing me. So if I seem like I'm yelling at you, I'm just going to make sure that I'm talking loud enough. <laughs> 
that I understand. And do let me know if my voice isn't coming through. I can project more. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I think the comment was just on mine for some reason. So I need to get that new mic I, that I got in the mail today installed. So I'm going to... Um... <laughs> Playing Legend. Okay, so I have put you in pinned video mode. So go ahead and just walk us through some poses. Yeah, go for it. All right. Fantastic. Well, welcome, everybody. So I'm just going to do this from standing at a chair. And everything that I show you today, you don't have to do all of it. You can pick and choose any piece of this and do it at your own pace. And... Um, and you can do it in any order. Just notice what your body may need. So, so much of yoga is about connecting with the breath and then the body. It's, a, it's an awareness practice, even at a physical level, noticing how is my body moving and how is it feeling and how am I doing. So, um, let's just start with a few breaths here. So, just get settled in for a moment. And all I want you to do is just breathe in and out through the nose. Just in and out. And it will look a little boring because I'm be sitting here breathing. Couple more breaths. Excellent. Notice that was probably about five to seven breaths. And how do you feel already? A little more at home okay so we're going to work from kind of the top down like i said you can really do most of these in any order or just like the areas that you need so let's just start with the neck and so we're going to breathe out and turn the head to the right inhale to center exhale to the left so a little dynamic movement is what we call this and so just moving left to right And then let's find our way over to the right side. So we're all at the right side. Now, when you're doing this on your own, you may want to do it for about five to seven breaths. But if you have two breaths, just work with that. And then let's inhale to center and exhale to your left. And then stay there. So I will be doing this a little shorter than we normally would in a class. Um, but you can make this longer or shorter. Five to seven breaths is usually a good placeholder. And then inhale back to center. Now let's take the chin downward, but you don't want to force the head down. You just want to let it hang there. And if we're just relaxing with the head downward, then the muscles will stretch. But if we force the head down, it'll have tension. So there's an awareness there. Am I using the strength of my neck to pull the head down? Or am I relaxed and allowing the head to drop down? Excellent. Let's come back to center and just look straight ahead. We're going to uh, work with shoulders now. And I really like this because so many people have shoulder issues. And I'm going to show a different movement in the shoulders. And so our arms are going to be down beside us. So I'm going to turn to the side so you can see what I'm doing. But you can stay right where you're at. So we'll turn to the side. I will turn to the side. And your arm, we'll start with the right arm. You're going to make a fist with the right hand. So you make, starting with the little finger, you make a fist with the right hand. And then you take the right arm back. Now what sometimes happens is people's elbows will start bending. And what you want to do is come back out of that. Take the arm back and stop before the elbow starts to buckle and then bend the wrist. And so you'll notice this wonderful stretch happening here in the shoulder joint and even up into the neck. And you get the side benefit of strengthening the back of the arm, the tricep. And then we bring that back down and release. Notice how that feels. You also got a stretch in the forearm, 
maybe the front of the hand. So lots of different places here. Now we need to do the left side. I'm gonna to turn to the left, you stay where you're at. I just need you to see what my arm is doing. So making a fist, starting with the little finger, and then you take the left arm back. And normally you're looking straight ahead. I'm turning so I can see you guys. So if the elbow starts to buckle, you wanna come back out of it, and then take it back, stopping before the elbow bends. Again, notice that awareness. I have to be paying attention to my body and noticing when it starts to bend or give in a way I'm not really wanting it to. And so you bend the wrist, and we're just holding it here. Again, roughly five to seven breaths. And then bring it back down. Now I'm going to face you, and we do both arms. So we did one, then we did the other. Now make a fist with both hands, starting with the little fingers. It just makes a difference in the order you do that in. Starting with the little fingers, we take both arms back. Now if you have a uh, armrest on your chair, you may not be able to do this. You may have to stand. You may need to move forward. But we have both arms back, and then we bend the wrist, just like we did before. Now the add-on to this is to squeeze the shoulder blades using the muscles between the shoulder blades. Contract them to squeeze the shoulder blades. My teacher would say, imagine you're trying to crack a walnut between the shoulder blades. And so we have so much tension between those shoulder blades, and this is helpful. And let's let that back down. And then just relax those arms, and you know, you can kind of shake that out if you need to. And notice how that feels. Feel pretty good? Yeah. Okay, so, all right, I get a thumbs up. So think about the side bend, the side seams of the body. And a lot of times we collapse, and this will just help us lengthen back up. So we're going to inhale the arms up. Inhaling the arms up above the head. And then we exhale the arms back down. And so let's do that again. And then exhale your right arm down. And then inhale as you stretch to your right. So right hand down, left arm up. And we're going to go side to side. So take a breath in. And as you breathe out, bring the left arm down. Inhale, right arm up. Exhale, right arm down. Inhale, left arm up. So there's that dynamic movement. Let's do that one more time. Let's go to the left. And then let's all find our way to the right side, to the right side. So we're all at our right side. The left hip is down. We're stretching these left ribs, reaching through the left fingers. Again, about five to seven breaths. I'm going to start a little short, stop a little short of that, just so we can show you everything. Left arm down. And now inhale your right arm up. So now we're to our left, the right ribs are stretching, we're reaching through the right fingertips. And again, you would do this about five to seven breaths. Let's take the right arm down. Excellent, notice how you feel, notice how you feel. Now we're going to do some twists because one of the things that starts collapsing is in the torso, your abdominals. And we start compensating so much when the abdominals start weak, weakening and we start slumping because we've been setting a lot or whatever we're doing. So we're going to do a twist that may be different than what you're used to. I think a lot of times we use our arms to crank around, but today we're going to have our hands in front of the heart. And you know the little notch there in your collarbone? You put your thumbs there and then the tallest fingers, you rest your chin on. And you want to keep chin and heart lined up and we'll do some dynamic movement again so we breathe out and rotate to the right and then inhale to center we want to keep all of that lined up exhale to the left inhale to center and so here's the awareness part keep going can you move in a range where the body is quiet so that the hips are not shifting the knees are not shifting i'm not scrunching up my shoulders to get more so now we're really tuning in to the body, moving in a way 
that will allow it to move. Let's find our way to the right side and then we stay. Maybe your chin kind of snuck over to the right. That's okay. Line it back up. And again, we would normally stay here about five to seven breaths. Inhale back to center. And then let's go to the left. And even I want to try to lead with my chin to drag the rest of my body there. So I'm going to come out of it and go to my left again to see if I can stay lined up. And then inhale back to center. And then bring the hands down. Just do a little forward bend in a seated position, bending at the hips. You can rest your hands on the thighs. You just hold over wherever you can go while keeping the spine long. So it may be just barely the hands. It may be down to the elbows. Wherever you can go while keeping the spine long, the ribs straight. This may be your go-to most days, just folding over. And then inhale back up, walking the hands back up. Again, you would hold that about five to seven breaths. So you may notice paying attention to all of these things, what does it do? It takes you out of everything around you. It takes you, your mind out of your problems, out of whatever's frustrating you, and it makes you tune in to this moment. And that's really the secret to it all. We have one more, and this is for the hips that so many of us need. All right. We want to bring the right knee up and turn it out. So again, bring it up, turn it out. Now, if the ankle doesn't work well on the left knee, like you, you're having to really yank it up to get it. What I want you to do is when you turn it out, maybe lower the left knee. So we're getting into this position is and crossing over. So I'm not sure if I'm still in the frame, but my legs are out straight. I'm lifting the right leg up, crossing over the left, and then taking it back down. So in this piriformis stretch, we bring the knee, right ankle, left knee, or you do the straight leg version. Now this is a piriformis stretch. It's over here in the glutes and the hips. We have all sorts of muscles coming through here and they get congested and tight. If one gets fussy, they all get fussy. And so this really helps that. Um, it's often called figure four. Uh, there's recline variations of this. There's so many variations of this, but you can get a good one out of the chair. And so I'll flex my toes to my knee. I'll have my hands on my thighs, and I'm going to fold at the hips again. And I'll just go to wherever I can go to while keeping the spine straight, while keeping the ribs straight. I'm not going to fold at the ribs or the waist. I'm just folding at the hips. So that might be right here today. Again, if this isn't available to you, you just stick with the straight legs without the forward bend. And then let's come up. Let's change legs. Notice how you feel. And then bring the left knee in, turn it out, left ankle and right knee. You can adjust the right knee if you need to. And again, you can keep legs straight and simply cross. So we have left knee bent, left ankle and right knee, flex through left toes. And then we fold over again, folding at the hips, not the ribs or the waist, going to wherever you can go to. And you're folding over more of the right knee, the foot that's on the ground. So when you do this, you fold more over the foot that's on the ground, that leg. And then inhale it up. Uncross your left leg. Notice how that's feeling. Notice how you're doing now. And then fold over once again. And then inhale it up. <clears throat> And let's just sit here for a moment for a few breaths. You can either leave the eyes open or you can close them. And just notice your breathing now. And then open the eyes back into the room. So what you did is you kind of unplugged from 
the topsy-turviness around you and tuned in to what you needed. You can use any of these movements we just did by themselves or together in pretty much any order. You can hold them to about five to seven breaths. You may want more or you may only have time for less. So you work with whatever you have today. So then back to you, which one of these you think you can use the most of? And I'm going to move down and sit back in front of you. Yeah, come on back. I'm going to put us back into gallery view. So that was incredible. I was I was following along right with the uh, right with the viewers and getting the benefits and effects. So what's amazing Tiffany, I mean, you know, I'm I'm a yogi as well and I've been doing yoga for many years also. So I know yes. I know that feeling um when the magical chemicals that yoga activates have been activated and you're in your relaxation response. And I feel that just from those few simple poses. And I was thinking to myself as we were doing that, wow, I could easily see a parent in this crazy homeschool situation, literally while working with their child, you know, in between little explanations, while they're doing a little independent work, I could just get a little yoga session in there at, without leaving the kitchen table. Not only that, mm -hmm. in between Zoom meetings, or I even thought, wow, you know what? I've been in so many Zoom meetings where there were moments when I didn't have the floor and I was just uh, more of a passive listener. I could do those poses during the Zoom meeting without being rude and kind of like, you know, mm -hmm getting the, the response trigger settled at that moment as well. So that's just, this is beautiful. I think this is a beautiful and useful hack. I like how you, I like how you broke it down into like a, almost like a head to hips. It's almost like a head to hips mm -hmm. workout, but you pointed out that any of those in isolation could be beneficial as well. So if there's one that feels good to me and I only have a two minutes or time for five to seven breaths, I can just choose one. And just do it right in this in this situation there's mm -hmm. no strict rules or tradition it's about listening to our bodies is that right oh oh absolutely and i think um this helps to give you a framework to meet your body's needs but what that will also do is you'll tune in to what's bothering you and you will intuitively know to do something so it may may not have been one of these stretches or poses, but you may go, oh, the side of my neck. I think if I just mm. went ear to shoulder on always do both sides. Right. Oh, okay, that feels better. Oh no, that didn't feel better. And we start tuning in and adapting. Yeah. We got some live feedback here, Tiffany. Uh, Miss Shay, she actually, she's on the New Minds team. It sounds like she was doing the poses. And she says that shoulder move was fire. She like gave the little fire symbol. So I think she liked that one. I have a feeling she'll be using that one for the long term, for sure. Uh, it's fantastic when you have shoulders that are just kind of all sticky and everything and yeah, tense. Yeah, and I think, I think we all tend to carry, carry that stress in knots in different places, right? So that's what you have to watch oh. for as well. As an individual, yeah. like, where are you carrying your knots? Yeah. Yeah, so. exactly. Well, you, I, I do this for a living. And part of it is because I experience all of that. Mm. I carry my stress up in here. I go to my resources to help me undo the shoulder stuff, get into the back hip thing, do this stretch or that movement. And so, so much of my teaching is also through my own personal growth. It's like, if this worked for me, it may be helpful to someone else. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I carry it too. That's fantastic. So I, you, I know you are doing some Zoom yoga instruction for different outlets right now, different studios. Um, if someone does want to tune in and find find Tiffany in particular, where can they find you doing some full full class yoga Zoom instruction right now? Okay, well, you can definitely email me, and I think you put the link out there. You can email me at Tiffany with one F at yogatiff.com. All of that's one F. Um, but the two studios I also work out of are Move Studio, M O V E Studio.com, or Rescue Yoga.com. Um, they have both have a full schedule. I'm on their schedule. Uh, but if you contact me directly, I have um, also some donation based classes I'm working with. And some individuals, sometimes uh, individuals need some personalized help. So I'm starting to help them through the miracle of Zoom. Yeah, we're all we're all adapting. I almost feel like uh, 
in total good taste, I say this, but I almost feel like we need a new end of class salute, which is the Zumaste. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> I love it. Yeah, I, okay, I'm sharing that one. Okay, yeah, you can steal that one. <laughs> it just came to me. <laughs> so I love this because, uh, of course, this video, this interview is live right now, but it will be recorded and it's people can find it on Facebook, New Minds TV, on YouTube, and on newminds.tv itself. And what people can do is once they've watched the whole thing once and heard all of our chitter chatter and they just want they just want the workout itself mm -hmm. on the chair. They can just, you know, fast forward straight to that and watch that as a little guided workout. Do you, uh, do you know, mm -hmm. do you know of any um, condensed videos of the chair yoga workout that are already out there? Not any that I know of. Um, I don't actually teach a chair yoga yeah. class, but I love doing this chair segment for yeah. those who just do a lot of setting. Right. Um, a lot of times the chair yoga classes are designed for those who have very limited mobility right. and they use a chair. But you and I had conversations a couple of years ago and realized, oh, this is so adaptable to um, our office people, our teachers, people who may sit or stand a lot. And uh, But I've never recorded it. So, hey, here we go. Here's the first one. That's awesome. Well, maybe there's something something to that. You could record a little series, the little 10-minute video snippets of the Chair Yoga series. Think about uh, it. I may have to do that. If, let yeah, us know make it a you, little let us series. Know if you do, because I think it will be popular. So, all right, oh, fantastic. I will. Okay. So, that was, that was such a valuable chat. Um, and I think we brought something really, uh, really unique and especially helpful to anybody who sees this and one that's so adaptable to what they need. That's what that's what I think is so mm -hmm. beautiful about it. And, you know, if we're ambitious yogis, we can find those full classes out there and and fit them into our schedule. But for some of us we need to find more creative and adaptive ways to get our get that relaxation response triggered. And I think this was a superb example. So we thank you, you know, from the bottom of our heart for coming to share that and a full a full zoomaste and a namaste <laughs> for giving us for sharing that wisdom with us and like you said they can contact you directly the emails right there under your picture tiffany at yogatiff.com and thanks for pointing out that it is one f it's not a typo because i have your name in the <laughs> upper right corner as well with uh and I, I didn't want people sending me notes that i'd misspelled your name um so yeah i think that's a wrap we would love to you know there's so much more where that came from so we'd like to cycle back through and have you back on in the future to go even deeper or based on feedback and questions that we get from people we could hone in on another subject or topic i would absolutely love that okay. absolutely and it's, it's been a joy to share this with you and, and to share it with your viewers um you know that that's what helps us through this time it makes me feel good to share something beneficial and um and as people are getting helped by it that's even better thank okay. you so much for inviting me ben yeah well, and zoomaste to you okay zoomaste have a beautiful evening and we'll talk to you soon you too bye-bye okay bye-bye